If you need help with practicing your writing skills, check out these workbooks that can be useful in improving your academic writing skills. The link is in the description below. Subject-verb agreement is one area of grammar that many students struggle with. In writing English sentences, it's very important to keep the subject and verb in agreement. This means that the subject and the verb need to match correctly. A singular subject needs a singular verb form. Singular means that there's only one of something. A plural subject needs a plural verb form. Plural means more than one. Now in a sentence, the subject can be singular or plural. A simple example would be an apple, which is singular, and apples, which is plural. The following sentence shows a singular subject used in a sentence. An apple is good to eat. A plural subject sentence could be, the apples are good. The first sentence has a singular subject, apple and a singular verb form, is. In the second sentence, the plural subject, apples, needs the plural verb form, are, to make it correct. We cannot say, the apples is good. So, an apple is, apples are. We can also sometimes have two singular subjects in a sentence. And when this happens, the verb will need to be the plural form. So in the example, the apple and banana are on the table. We have two singular subjects, but we need to use the plural form are. We do not say the apple and banana is on the table. Now in this example, it may be easy to see the problem. But when sentences become more complex, it's easier to make a mistake. You need to be able to identify the subject and verb in each sentence that you write and confirm that they are in agreement. Here is one common mistake. The word that comes before the word of in a phrase is the subject of the sentence. For example, a vase of blue flowers are on the table. This is not correct. To write this sentence correctly, it needs to be like this. A vase of blue flowers is on the table. The subject, a vase, needs to be with is, not a vase are. The words a vase of blue flowers can be divided into a vase and of blue flowers. Of blue flowers talks about what is in the vase. So the subject of this sentence is a vase. So again, it should be a vase is, not a vase are. With the following phrases, the subject will follow the word of. In these sentences, the phrase is a lot of. A lot of the money is spent on infrastructure. A lot of the books are for sale. We need to look at the words after the phrase to find the subject. In the first sentence, the word money comes after the phrase, a lot of. The word money is an uncountable noun, something that cannot be counted, and is considered to be a singular noun. So the subject-verb agreement is the money is spent. In the second sentence, books is a countable noun. You can count books. And because it is in the plural form, we need to use the plural form. The books are. In this next example, the phrase is all of. All of the people are waiting outside. All of the pie is gone. 
the people are and the pie is. Another phrase is some of. Some of the pie is missing. Some of the people are complaining. Again, the subject verb agreement would be the pie is and the people are. With these phrases that end in of, the verb agrees with the word after of. Here's another common mistake that people make. In a sentence that uses or, either or, neither nor, the verb will agree with the noun or a pronoun closest to it. Either the company president or the general manager is speaking at the meeting. In this sentence, the subject verb agreement will be decided by the closer word manager. Manager is. Here's another example. Neither the price nor the quality is good. In this case, we will use the singular verb after the word quality. So, quality is good. Here's one more example. Neither the pen nor the pencils go in that bag. In this case, we will use the plural form after the word pencils. Pencils go. And here's one more. Neither the president nor the managers want to make the changes. In this sentence, the verb will agree with the closer noun, the word managers. So, managers want. Generally, when there are two or more subjects that are connected by and, we should use a plural verb. For example, a car and a truck are parked in the driveway. However, when there's a compound noun, you will need to use a singular verb. Here's an example. Breaking and entering are against the law. In this example, the words breaking and entering is a compound noun, so it's considered to be a single unit which means we need to use a singular verb. So the correct way to write this sentence is breaking and entering is against the law. Sometimes a phrase comes between the subject and the verb. The company president, along with the managers, is not pleased with the outcome. In this sentence, the subject is the word president, this is followed by the phrase, along with the managers. And because the word managers is a plural word, often students think you should use a plural verb. But in this sentence, because the subject is the word president, which is singular, the verb needs to also be singular. The president is not pleased. Here's another example. The students in the classroom are studying hard. Again, there are some extra words between the subject and the verb. But in this sentence, the subject and verb would be students are studying. One more example. A good set of knives costs about $100. Here, many students might think that the subject is knives, but in fact, it is the word set. What kind of set? A set of knives. So we need to make the subject verb agreement between the word set and costs. A set costs, not knives cost. Most indefinite pronouns are considered singular. Here's a list of indefinite pronouns. Each of the students has finished their work on time. Although the word each seems to have a plural meaning, the word each is considered singular. So as the subject of this sentence, it needs to agree with the verb has finished. Each has 
finished. Everybody who finished their work was rewarded. Everybody is the subject and the verb should be was rewarded. One more thing to remember. The words none and neither are singular when used alone. Here's an example. Three rooms are available. None has a window facing the ocean. Both of the managers were busy. Neither was able to join the meeting. Another area where a subject verb agreement can become difficult is when we talk about distances or periods of time or sums of money or things that are considered as a unit. So for example, three miles is a long way to walk in the heat. Now, three miles is talking about a distance, but it is a unit. Five years is not very long. In this sentence, five years is a unit or a period of time. Five dollars is all you will need. This is an example of using sums of money. Whenever you have a subject that is considered as a unit, you need to use a singular verb. Just one more. When we wish something was true, we might say, I wish it were Friday. Or, if John were here, things would be different. Now, this may sound incorrect, but this is how we want to write these types of sentences, especially in formal writing assignments. You should follow this rule. Now, in recent years, however, even in spoken language, we sometimes now use, I wish it was Friday. If John was here, things would be different. But the correct or more formal writing style is to write, I wish it were Friday. If John were here, things would be different. So as you can see, there are different rules to help you decide the subject-verb agreement in a sentence. You need to be careful when writing your sentences that the subject and verb agree. Now, as you continue to write in English, you will begin to know what the correct subject and verb agreement is when you write your sentences. So keep practicing. Happy writing. And be sure to check out my workbooks that are designed to be used along with these videos.